70 years ago, in February 1945, a strange convoy was going down these streets. The convoy came from Berlin and it was loaded with 1.5 tons of uranium, 1.5 tons of heavy water, 10 tons of graphite and various instruments the physicists of the German nuclear weapons program would require for their experiments. This was the German nuclear pile to be transported to southern Germany to a tiny village called Heigeloch and we are arriving right now. With the Allied forces arriving, closing in on Berlin, the physicists were in desperate need of a new place to continue their experiments on criticality. So the final destination of that convoy was the Baroque castle church, or more like the rock cavern that lay underneath it. And just there on the right, you can see that very church where 70 years ago, Jesus was floating above heavy waters. This is the place, the church on top, and inside that rock cavern, the German nuclear pile, which is now a museum. So let's go inside and check it out. This is the reactor vessel that housed the 10 tons of graphite as a neutron reflector, and above, as usually would be inserted in a running reactor, the nuclear fuel, uranium cubes. The cubes were aligned like atoms in a cubic crystal system. They just had an edge length of about 5 centimeters, while ideally, for this geometry, they should have had an edge length of about 7 centimeters, but the Germans did not have enough uranium at this time. This is just a replica of the uranium cubes, because with the Allied forces arriving in April 1945, the German physicists took their uranium pile and buried it in an acre nearby. But as part of the ALSOS mission, the American forces actually managed to find the nuclear pile buried in that acre. Well, most of it, so to say, because some of these cubes went missing prior to being buried. Some of the physicists involved in this project actually went to hide some of the cubes elsewhere. One of these cubes was found, I believe, in the 1970s by children playing at the creek. And they were amused that this heavy little cube, when they were throwing it at the pavement, would give off uh, little sparks. That's because uranium is pyrophoric. It just uh, spontaneously ignites if it's in a fine dust and comes in contact with air. And, well, that's how one of these cubes were found. And these are the original cubes of Hitler's nuclear pile. These cubes are safe to handle and display because they're pretty much just pure uranium metal. Uh, the Germans never achieved criticality. They would have required about 1.5 times the amount of uranium in order to achieve criticality with this type of reactor. So uh, these uranium fuel elements, these uranium cubes, don't actually contain the fission isotopes, the short-lived isotopes, the cesium-137, the plutonium and stuff that an operating nuclear reactor, a critical reactor, actually produces. So you can see I'm just getting background readings of about 10 times normal background radiation on that plastic uh, box there hidden inside. This shields all the alphas that are emitted from uranium, but, well, they're just emitted on the surface anyway, because the uranium pretty much shields itself. So in theory, you could place one of these cubes as a paper white just on your table. This is the top, the cover of the reactor, next to it the blown reactor containment vessel, and uh, the storage for heavy water. I was measuring around a bit in the cave itself, as you can see here. And then I was also measuring the stuff next to it, which is, as I said, the original containment vessel. The Allied forces decided it's best to actually wreck the entire setup with explosives, and this is what remains of the reactor vessel. And while I don't know if this was maybe just the outer layer of the reactor vessel, it appeared to be quite clean in terms of radioactive contamination anyway. Well, so much for the museum, but the locals actually called me because of some quite interesting rumors. Apparently, the Allied forces only removed the cubes from that crate of uranium the Germans had buried in an acre, but they didn't bother to remove the crate itself. And beneath that crate, there was supposed to be the startup neutron source, 500 milligrams of radium mixed together with beryllium. It's quite interesting to note that when you look for photos from the ALSOS mission online, the right bit of this very photo seems to be cut off at all times. 
the right bit actually contains houses and would pretty much give away the location of where they were digging for the uranium cubes. This old book still has the original images without being cropped. So with the help of photos like this, the locals actually managed to pinpoint the location where the Allied forces had been digging for the uranium cubes. So understandably quite concerned with the fact that there might be a highly radioactive neutron source buried within the acre, they asked me to check it out with my highly sensitive scintillator and see if I could find anything radioactive. So we walked around all day. All the locations that were at reasonable angle to the houses I checked. I walked meadows with my scintillator. I even walked some of these garlic smelling plants and into the woods. I checked pretty much every place that was around, walking around for hours and hours that day. I checked the acre, but uh, in the end I did not find anything. Which is kind of expected. You would, you would think that in Germany somebody else would have dug out this piece of radium a long time ago. But still it was a great adventure to come looking for it and especially thanks to all the locals and their hospitality. If you want to know more about the German nuclear pile and the ALSAS mission from the Allied forces, check out the links provided in this video's description.